Welcome back to Microbiology Lab. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the first biochemical test of the semester, and that is the starch hydrolysis test, also called the amylase test. And every one of these tests that we're going to be looking at, for the most part, is going to be detecting some protein or enzyme. And the enzyme of interest here is actually amylase. Now, some bacteria can perform what's called amylose hydrolysis or starch hydrolysis. One form of starch is amylose, but we'll just call it starch hydrolysis. And the way that they're actually able to do this is using an enzyme called amylase. You may have seen this enzyme before if you've taken anatomy and physiology. This is an enzyme that's present both in the small intestine and then also in a different form in the mouth. It's actually an enzyme that's going to break apart starch into individual monosaccharides and disaccharides. And so here's the general reaction right here. If you have starch, which is a large complex carbohydrate, it's a polysaccharide, starch can be broken down by the enzyme amylase into monosaccharides, specifically glucose, and then disaccharides, which would be just two glucose monomers linked together. This is also a good opportunity to discuss how we write biochemical reactions. So in a biochemical reaction, we have a reaction arrow that typically goes from left to right. And on the left side of that arrow, we have what's called the reactants or the substrates. On the right side of the arrow, we have the products. In this case, our reactant or substrate is starch, and our products are glucose, which is the monosaccharide, as indicated right here, and the disaccharides. And so the way we read this is some enzyme converts starch into these products, glucose and disaccharides. And the way that the reactants are converted to products is through an enzyme. And typically, enzymes are written either above or below this reaction arrow. The convention I use is to always write it above the arrow, and I'll normally color code the enzyme blue. So if you're looking at a reaction arrow and there's something blue written above the arrow, chances are it's an enzyme, and I'll always indicate that. Also note that enzymes pretty much always, with few exceptions, end in ACE, A-S-E. All right, and in this test, amylase is going to be the enzyme that we're detecting. The way that we actually run this test, the starch hydrolysis test, is we have a plate here that's actually going to be coated in starch initially. Initially it'll look very similar to a TSA plate, uh, but it's going to be coated in starch, which happens to be the substrate for our enzyme amylase. Okay? Now, if bacteria do not have amylase, then they're not going to be able to convert starch into the products. In other words, they're not going to be able to break down starch. Okay? So if we think about this logically, if bacteria do not have the enzyme amylase, then all the starch is going to be left on the plate because they're not going to be able to break that down. However, if bacteria do possess the enzyme amylase, they're going to be able to break down the starch. And so anywhere where the bacteria are that have the enzyme amylase, you're not going to have any starch. Okay? And so the way we test to see if there's any starch is we use iodide. And specifically, we're going to be using Graham's iodine. Um, this is actually the iodine that we used in the Gram stain. Okay? So we're going to add Graham's iodine to the plate. Right? Now on this plate, this is not how we do it specifically in the lab. We'll look at that in a minute. But here we have one species on the left written as A and one species on the right written as B. And when you pour iodine on the plate, after you've incubated it and grown the bacteria, anywhere where there's starch, it turns purple. Okay? So we see on the right side here, pretty much all of this is purple for this species. But over on the left side for A, there's areas, particularly you can see around the smear, where there's no purple. In fact, you can see directly through the plate. Let's talk about what that means. First, we're going to look on the right side and look at B. These bacteria are actually amylase negative. And what this means when we have the negative sign here, that means that these bacteria, whatever species it is, does not have amylase. So why is this all purple? Well, remember, if the bacteria do not have amylase, they're not going to be able to break down starch. So all the starch remains on the right side of the plate. The starch is still there. They were unable to break it down due to the lack of amylase. And so when we pour the iodine on it, Iodine stains starch purple. And so everywhere there's purple, that means there's still starch. So pretty much, if you have a plate and there's no clearing, 
or it's all purple, that means that you have an amylase negative organism. So if you see all purple left on the plate, or it's a very dark purple, or no clearing, you have an amylase negative organism. Now in contrast, on the left side, we can clearly see that not all of this is purple. In fact, everywhere around the smear, directly, we actually see that there's no purple, and we can see what's a clearing around the smear. In fact, if you hold this up to a light, you can actually see directly through the plate. These organisms on the left are amylase positive. Let's talk about the rationale for why that is. If you have an amylase positive organism, that means these organisms have the enzyme amylase. They possess this enzyme. Therefore, they are able to break down starch into the products. But if they're able to break down starch, that means that there's going to be areas on this side of the plate where there's no starch. And so when you pour the iodine on there, it doesn't stain purple where there's no starch. And so that creates what's called a zone of clearing that will manifest around the smear itself. And so if you have an amylase positive organism, the major thing you look for is whether or not there's clearing. And if there is clearing, it's amylase positive. Now, yes, you can worry about the color, the purple or whatnot, but the easiest way to tell the difference between an amylase positive organism, such as on the left, and an amylase negative organism on the right, is in the positive case, there's clearing around the smear. In the negative case, there's no clearing at all around the smear. Now, when we do this test, we're not going to do one species on one half of the plate and a different one on the other side. The way we're actually going to do it is one species per plate, and we did what's called a single streak. The reason we do a single streak is because uh, it's a lot easier to read whether or not there's clearing around that smear because it's just a line. And so we're only expecting, if there's clearing, that to be directly around this line. Okay, so we already know we're going to inoculate by single streak. We're then going to incubate the organism, and when we take it out, we're going to pour Graham's iodine on it. And remember, if there's a zone of clearing, you have an amylase positive organism. So let's consider the right case over here first. This is an amylase negative organism, where this gray line represents the smear. Well, when you have an amylase negative organism, you'll be able to see the smear most likely when you pull it out and, and put iodine on it. But you'll be able to see no clearing zone around that streak, okay, around that smear. You'll see nothing around it. However, if you have an amylase positive organism, once you pour the iodine on there, anywhere where there's no starch, you're going to see clearing. And so more or less what you're going to see is you'll see this streak where you actually put the bacteria. Um, that's the gray line right here. But around that, and it's not going to be perfect like this, but you'll actually see a zone of clearing. And if you actually hold this plate up to the light, you'll be able to see directly through this clearing zone and be able to see what's on the other side, okay? And so that's pretty much all there is to the starch hydrolysis test. When you learn this, you're gonna be focusing on the results mainly. And the result is, if you have clearing, that's the key, clearing, you have an amylase positive organism. If you do not have clearing, you have an amylase negative organism. And remember, amylase is just the enzyme that breaks down starch, also called amylose, into monosaccharides and disaccharides. All right, hopefully this video gave you a good intuition of the starch hydrolysis test. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.